So here we are, looking at this marvelous oil painting by Caravaggio. And Caravaggio's works were very influential for the Baroque period. Um, this particular piece is called David with the Head of Goliath. And it shows young David, and he has just killed Goliath. And as opposed to the normally victorious poses of David that we have seen, we now look at him and he looks sorrowful and resentful and not at all victorious. And this painting is currently in the Galleria Borghese in Rome, and it was made around the year 1610. In this piece, we see a double self-portrait as the younger Caravaggio holds the head of the older Caravaggio. This is symbolizing how the young, reckless Caravaggio ruined his life later on. And this reflects how Caravaggio committed various sins throughout his life. He was accused of murder in 1606, and there was a price on his head. And as he was on the run, he continued to paint, and he also continued to get into more trouble. So he actually wanted to return to Rome, but he needed redemption from the Pope. And this painting, as his depiction of himself is manifested in the head of Goliath, is sort of his way of asking for this redemption from the Pope. Something in interesting about this painting is, note the, the sword, the upturned sword, by the, the hip of the, of, of the David in this, in this painting. Yes, it, it points towards Goliath's head, and the, the composition almost draws your eye towards the head of Goliath, which shows Caravaggio's focus on the sinner and not, not the youthful and the well, good. Actually, many believe that this symbolizes the, the affair that, that Caravaggio allegedly had with the model that was for David. And um, this, this is a controversy that's been disputed between the critics of this piece. Well, yes, because... I, I mean, I, I see what you're saying, but personally, I've always seen it as just a double self-portrait because you have the young Caravaggio and you can compare it with his older self and it's it's almost a reflective painting because it, I believe that its true purpose is to illustrate his um, reflections on his sins and his acknowledgement of his guilt shown through this double self-portrait. That that I that I would agree with the the the, the papacy. This was for the you know for some redemption into his his religion. This was actually for a um, a religious leader within the church that um, in hopes that he would be he would be redeeming himself and be forgiven and that he would be able to move on after this young Caravaggio has ruined the the old in this scene beheaded old Caravaggio. The light in this piece really characterizes the two, um, the old and the young Caravaggio. Notice how there's so much more light on the young Caravaggio or David as opposed to the, the still lit but less lit of the old Caravaggio, um, the head of Goliath. This, this is, can be representative of both you know, David's purity, the significance of young Caravaggio's um, effect on the old Caravaggio, and the, the darkness that envelops, that envelops uh, old Caravaggio it can be representative of the sin that he feels. And that's absolutely right. And also, um, with the way that he sets up this lighting and them coming out of the shadows, that technique was known as tenebrism. And this was a technique that was often utilized in uh, not only Caravaggio's work, but also in other Baroque paintings, and um, it really became a uh, hallmark of the Baroque period. And uh, you can you can see this use of tenebrism in um, works by those who followed Caravaggio, such as um, Artemisia Gentileschi, because um, people who followed his works were known as uh, Caravaggistes. Um, because they would emulate his style and the, the types of techniques that he used.
what I want to point out here is the extreme use of tenebrism with the use of just the bright lights just on the figures with no background whatsoever, just sort of blackness, and it really adds to the whole atmosphere of the uh, painting because it's all dramatic and everything, and even though we don't see the dramatic red uh, curtain that we usually see in a lot of his pieces, it still has its effect. Something that makes this piece um, very dramatic in comparison to the painting it's based off by Giorgione, um, the use of lighting both with the composition and the dripping blood, and if you look at the on Goliath's forehead, you can see the stress that's being made by him being his head being held up by the hair. Um, this makes the piece much more dramatic than the original in that the conflict and the strain is shown. And uh, you mentioned the blood, and that's another point that um, I wanted to discuss because actually if you look at the way the blood is depicted and you compare it to some of his other works such as uh, Judith beheading Holofernes and the blood in that particular work is very stringy and it, it doesn't really look realistic. However, in this painting, it, it still has some of that string-like quality, but it it's more realistically depicted. It and, can almost be like veins or like vertebrae. Absolutely, and I, I think that this shows Caravaggio's personal relationship to the work. After all, it was uh, not only a double self-portrait, uh, but it was one of his final works as well. And actually, if you look um, at the sword, at the blade of the sword, you can see that there's there's something inscribed there, and that that is this. It's H A S O S, which stands for Humilitus Oxidit Superbium, which means humility kills pride. And this is very significant to the message that Caravaggio is trying to to co communicate in this piece about himself and about how the younger self and the older self and how they've come to be this certain present that he currently lives. And this is also a part of his reaching for forgiveness from the church and that he, instead of being prideful and reckless, he's come, become, you know, very humbled and by these misfortunes and this, the consequences for his previous actions. And it almost seems like... Um the young David may be pitying Goliath due to the expression on his face uh, rather than taking pride in what he's done. And this could be seen as a symbol of um, Goliath wanting redemption from the papal official and um, that perhaps the papal official should take pity on him because uh, he has committed sin but he is aware of what he has done. and. Um, this is a common theme in his works because they've, they've always tended to show uh, his focus on the sinner, not the virtuous. Yes, virtue, you're absolutely right. And what's so interesting about the background of this painting is that when it was received by the church, they were actually going to grant Caravaggio his pardon. However, before this pardon could be received, Caravaggio passed away. Caravaggio's untimely death when he was age 39, many believe was part of his of the paints back in his time when he was painting, actually had much lead in them. So realistically, it's quite possible that the paintings that Caravaggio painted to redeem himself ended up killing him through lead poisoning in the end. Uh -huh.